Good evening, parents, and welcome to Boost Your Baby's Brain and to our Parent Night. The expectation of parenthood has changed and intensified over the past century. Specifically, in the past 50 years, research has demonstrated the importance of a parent's role in the lives of their young children. With research has come an increased cultural message concerning the responsibility of parents to foster their preschool child's cognitive development. A hundred years ago, if a mother raised a healthy child, she had fulfilled her role. But as infant mortality rates dropped, the emphasis has shifted to better hygiene, nutrition, education, and enrichment. Society now holds parents responsible for the child's psychological health and cognitive development. Parents are spending more time and money than ever before to raise healthy, smart, talented, and successful children. The question is, is there any truth to the assertion that a parent has any power to optimize or increase a child's brain power? Is it actually possible to boost a baby's brain? Well, tonight we're going to find out. The big ideas that we're going to be discussing tonight are understanding that brain science can give insights about learning, the brain begins its development days after conception and continues to make new connections throughout life. During the early years, there are critical times for the senses to complete their development, and both the environment and genes play a huge role in a child's development. Now for my cohort tonight, I am recording this, and I am planning to use this presentation for a parent night. But as I tried to record it the way I would for a parent night, I realized that I would be spending way more time than I have on this screencast to share my presentation. So I'm going to be basically just reading through it pretty fast and just know that on an actual parent night, I would be um, stopping, taking questions, and explaining things a lot more. So um, with that, I'm just going to go through the um, PowerPoint. The adult human brain weighs a little more than three pounds. It's the size of a small grapefruit and it's shaped like a walnut and it can fit in the palm of your hand. It works ceaselessly even when we're asleep. It represents only 2% of body weight, but you know it consumes nearly 20% of our calories. That's just amazing. And so this is an adult brain. Um, I wanted to share just parts of the brain so you'd understand how the brain is developing in your child. The frontal lobe, which is the red area, is the thinking, planning, and self-will area, and the working memory. The temporal lobe is for sound, music, face, and object recognition. The occipital lobe is the visual processing. The parietal lobe is spatial orientation and calculation. The brain stem, vital body functions, heartbeat, respiration, body temperature, and digestion, and the cerebellum coordinates movement. So this is a baby's brain. It's about a quarter the size of a fully grown adult brain, and only the lower portions of the nervous system, meaning the spinal cord, cord and the brain stem, are very well developed. The lower brain is largely in control of the newborn's behavior. That would be uh, kicking, grasping, crying, sleeping, and feeding. Those are all functions of the uh, brain stem and the spinal cord. A child's brain at birth has all the brain cells or neurons that it will ever have. The human brain takes time to develop, so nature has ensured that the neural circuits responsible for the most vital bodily functions breathing, heartbeat, circulation, sleeping, sucking, and swallowing are all up and running by the time a baby emerges from the protective womb. The rest of brain development can follow at a more leisurely pace, maximizing the opportunity for a baby's experience and environment to shape his emerging mind. Neurons are the functioning core for the brain and the entire nervous system. And I wanted to show this graph because it shows how neurons are developing as a baby is growing and so critical that these develop um, successfully. Most cells in your body turn over, meaning they reproduce throughout your life, but neurons in the brain are born in fetal life, and those are the same cells functioning into old age. 
Neural circuits that are not used enough are pruned or eliminated. This helps to strengthen those that are left and helps them to work more efficiently. So it's not bad that they're being pruned because actually they need to be. Um, neurons are developing very quickly. They're very, um, there are lots of neurons and they at first bloom under genetic control and there's an overproduction. And then at about 28 weeks, um, th there's a massive pruning that goes on resulting in the loss of up to a third to one half of those. So this uh, graph shows the stages of brain development in an infant and it's rather self-explanatory. You can see the different ages when different um, parts of the um, child are being developed in the brain. Uh, this is a great graph because it shows uh, the windows of opportunity of a child's brain as it's maturing and this is so important for parents to understand that there's a period when the brain demands certain types of input in order to create or stabilize long-lasting structures and these are called critical periods or windows of opportunity. Um, and so some examples are that if a perfect brain doesn't receive visual stimuli by the age of two, the child will be forever blind. If a child doesn't hear words by the age of 12, she will most likely never learn a language. Um, learning a second language can occur, but the skill level probably will not be as high. It's important periods in which the young brain responds to certain types of input from its environment. Environmental influences have a significant impact on physical, emotional, and cognitive development of young children. And I love that Forrest Gump picture because it shows a father and son, and you can see how strongly the genetics are in play there. However, environment and experience can actually change the physical structure of the brain, and the environment determines the functioning ability of the brain. The young mind is astonishingly active capable and self-organizing. The brain creates itself. It's not an empty vessel. It's an active organ that grows through its own activity. Heredity may determine the basic number of neurons or brain cells children are born with and their initial arrangement, but this is merely a framework. A child's environment has enormous impact on how the circuits of the brain will be laid. Nature and nurture together, not nature or nurture alone, determine the outcome of our lives. IQ is not fixed at birth. The developing brain's flexibility declines over time, but some plasticity endures. The immature brain is highly plastic, flexible and adaptive, and capable of incorporating a greater variety of experiences and influences than at later ages. As neural connections become refined and consolidated through experience, and as sensitive periods channel brain growth. So is it too late for children to develop cognitive skills after the early years? No, human development continues throughout the lifespan. So what we've all wanted to hear tonight is what can I do to boost my baby's brain? Well, the first thing that's so important is nutrition. It's critical to boosting your baby's brain. Brain, de brain development is most sensitive to a baby's nutrition between mid-gestation and two years of age. After birth, growth depends critically on the quality of a child's nutrition. Iron deficiency has been clearly linked to cognitive deficit in young children, and children need a high level of fat during the first two years for optimum brain growth. The diets of many pregnant women and young children lack the necessary nutrients for optimal functioning. Brain cells consume oxygen and glucose, a form of sugar, for fuel. The more challenging the brain's task, the more fuel it consumes. Many students and their teachers do not eat a breakfast with sufficient glucose or drink enough water during the day for healthy brain function. Iron, iodine, zinc, DHA, choline, vitamin B are critical nutrients. And I'm going to be giving parents uh, handouts showing what the nutrients are that their child needs and uh, where they can find those nutrients. So there are all sorts of good nutritional um, uh, information out there that I'll be handing out that night. Research indicates that vitamin C is crucial for early brain development. The highest concentrate of vitamin C in the body is found in brain neurons and vitamin C deficiencies can be associated with learning and cognitive disabilities in later life. Smokers have below normal levels of vitamin C as much as 40 percent lower in pack-a-day smokers. Cigarettes rob your body of vitamin C by breaking down and excreting it much faster than normal, and studies show that people exposed 
to secondhand smoke also need extra vitamin C. Toxic substances from the cigarettes destroy the vitamin C. Research indicates that hydration affects cognitive ability and mood. Severe dehydration has been shown to cause cognitive deficits such as short-term memory and visual perceptual abilities, as well as mood disturbance. And water intake is encouraged by thirst sensation. Vulnerable groups such as children and older adults may be unable to adequately communicate thirst. Young children are dependent on adults for hydration. The environment affects how genes work and genes determine how the environment is, is interpreted. Research has now proven that connections uh, between brain cells grow at any age and steady, a steady source of positive emotional support is necessary, a nutritious diet, an atmosphere free of undue pressure and stress but suffused with a degree of pleasurable intensity, a series of novel challenges that are neither too easy nor too difficult for the child at a stage of development, opportunity to choose and modify uh, one's own efforts, enjoyable safe environment that promotes exploration and the fun of learning. Allow a child to be an active participant rather than a passive observer. The human brain is genetically predisposed for language. Babies start uttering sounds and babble nonsense phrases as early as the age of two months. By eight months, infants begin to try out simple words. Language areas of the brain become really active at 18 to 20 months. A toddler can now learn 10 or more words per day, yielding a vocabulary of about 900 words at age three, increasing to 2,500 to 3,000 words by age five. Research shows that babies whose parents, and this is interesting, especially fathers who talked to them more, had significantly larger vocabularies. The one form of stimulation that's been proven to make a difference is language, and infants under six months respond with equal interest to the sounds of all languages, but soon develop perceptual maps that direct them toward the sounds of the language they hear most frequently. The, um, there are different reasons why arts are so important, and these are the reasons perception of relationships, attendance to nuance, perspective, ability to shift goals, permission to make decisions, and use of imagination. Music, on uh, the CD cover of the Baby Einstein, it says that music can have a powerful influence on a child's development from the very youngest age, and in addition to stimulating creativity and adding social enjoyment, active music making has been shown to contribute to making kids brighter. So research does show that music does affect the children's um, brain. And several studies have shown that children ages three to four who received piano lessons scored significantly higher on spatial temporal tasks than a group who did not get the instrumental music training. Further, the increase was long term, which is really interesting. And brain imaging reveals that creating instrumental music excites the same regions of the left frontal lobe responsible for mathematics and logic. So that's my presentation, and um, I'm so excited to share it with you because. Um, uh, I want to be able to offer these kinds of opportunities for my parents to learn more about their children, more about brain growth and development. This class has been so awesome and I've read so many wonderful studies and I'm just really excited to put all this into practice. God bless and have a great evening. Bye.